Amen. Thank you, Joseph. And I appreciate him going with me and uh, spending time helping an old man along the way. Uh, we need young ones, don't we? Amen. Coming along, doing and working with us. I'll pass around some things uh, for you to look at. Uh, I'll start out with this one. Um, have any of y'all ever heard of a place called Artney? Uh, okay, this man's from Artney. Artney is in the Shetland Islands. Mm -hmm. It is the smallest of the Shetland Islands. It's about 40 miles long mm -hmm. and not that wide. They have a main highway. It goes from one end to the other. It's 40 miles. <laughs> His name's Arthur. His name's Arthur. And uh, can y'all see that all right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, good, good, good. See you know. mm -hmm. Fair to yeah, go. Uh, y'all see it? All right. Anyway, there you go. Can you see it? All right, good, good. All right, that's Arthur. He and I became friends right off the bat. I was on board this ship and uh, passing out Bibles and giving out literature, gospel literature. And he said, I want to talk with you. And we began to talk and, and of course shared the gospel with him. Amen. What is the gospel? It is how that Christ died for our sins according to Amen. the scripture. Mm -hmm. And that he was buried and how that he rose again the third day according mm -hmm. to the scripture. Amen. That's the gospel. And I began to share that with, with Art, Arthur and he, I don't know if he's saved or not, but he said this, he, he said, if you ever want to come to Arkney, you can come to my place <laughs> and be glad to have you. He has spent most of his life on the water, uh, supports his family. There are not a lot of jobs on Arkney. <laughs> Just, you know, raise a sheep. <laughs> and hopefully he'll be one of God's sheep. You know, and we don't know that's in God's. Yeah. Mind, mm -hmm. thoughts, and all that. Um, but our job is to use the gospel. Right. That's Amen. what we did. Oh. Anyway, this is money from all over the world. I mean, it's all kind of funny money. <laughs> <laughs> you heard of funny money? <laughs> it's just, uh, and I've got a jar full of coins uh -huh. from all over. Yeah. They like to share something with you. Seafarers are an odd bunch of people in one sense, but they're people. Right. They're folk. Mm -hmm. And they can sense immediately if you love them or you don't. Mm -hmm. They're very good at that. There's no doubt about that. These are some Chinese on board the ship. Um, Chinese mask stuff anyway. I mean, they're not unusual for them to wear a mask. You know, they, you see pictures of me before um, the COVID. And they too, they, they'll take a Bible and read it, stand there and read it. And you'll walk away and come back 15, 20 minutes later, and they're still reading. They're still reading. Very good. Now, this fella here, he's a cook on board ship. He's a cook. Do you believe in the sovereignty of God? Amen. He was on the Oslo Bowl. And I met him there. I took him off the ship. We went into town, a few of his folks, and then we got back to the, the port, to the dock in Mobile, and he said, come and eat. I said, look, it's 10 o'clock at night. He said, oh, but I have something for you. I said, well, okay. I mean, you know, <laughs> that's what you do. Mm -hmm. It meant I'd be home after midnight, but that's okay. And he had fixed some <coughs> borscht. Borscht. You ever heard of borscht? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Beet soup. 
<laughs> Russians eat funny stuff. <laughs> they do. And then over two years, nearly three years later, I'm on another ship and I went on board and I always find a kitchen. There's a reason for that. <laughs> but I find a kitchen. And he said, I know you. I said, I know you. I said, you were on another ship. He says, Oslo Bolt too. I said, yes, yes, I remember you. I remember. And there he is with Russian scripture in his hand. Amen. And we, I don't know if I'll see him again this side of glory, but I know he's heard the word. Amen. And I hope to see him on the other Amen. side. Amen. Amen. I do. I hope to see him on that other side. Let me see what else I got in here. Oh, okay. This is a young lady. I don't know that it's a good thing for them to be out there, but she was there. And she's on a ship that lays cable, communication cable. And I noticed that all of the officers were American and all of the crew were Filipino. And I got to talking to her and I said, I noticed that all of your officers are American. Which is unusual. You hardly ever see an American on a ship. Very few. Very few. There's a reason for that, and I'll give it to you later. But she said the reason that all the officers are American and the workers are Filipinos is because they will work. <laughs> right. Said, we know how to tell people what to do. They know how to do what you tell them to do. But she gladly took scripture. It's unusual to me when you hand I mean, they're just, yes, you brought us something. Mm. You brought us something. And we'll bring them, matter of fact, we shared some with uh, Joseph. We bring them bags of, uh, and the Armstead collects them. When Brother Doug was up in Canada, he'd get toiletries little soaps and little uh, things like that. And we bring that on board. He said, they don't have that. Mm. Listen, they don't, uh. but they don't have a lot of things. So we're able to give that to them. But anyway, you can see she's smiling. She's smiling. She's glad somebody came to see them. They're glad somebody cares. Amen. And that means they're glad you care. Yeah. Because I couldn't do this if it wasn't for churches like New Testament. These are some uh, Indians. They're dot, not feather. Okay. Y'all remember that? Dot, not feather. Okay. <laughs> and they take the scripture. And they're smiling. You see them? They're smiling. You go over to Hyderabad or Bombay and say, here, I want to hand you back. Oh, no. no right. No Bible. You go on a board ship. That's it. Man. They're in their own little world. That's what makes the difference. And I'm glad I can get into that. Now, this crew here, it's a, it, it's a Russian crew, but look at those Mickey Mouse ears on them. You see that? Mickey Mouse ears. They're really for muffling sound in the engine room, but anyway. And they were just happy that I was in, got some Russians and others, but Taking scripture. They have the scripture. <coughs> I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time, more time on this, but I do want to show you some things. Um, this is part of the work that I volunteer to do. The Coast Guard is 40% behind on recruiting. Hmm. I mean, they're hurting. Right now, if you join the Coast Guard and you will, if you will be a cook, a culinary specialist <laughs> is what they call it now. You're a CS, culinary specialist. They'll give you $5,000 just to join <laughs> because they're hurting. Yeah. They're hurting. People don't want to serve. And the, I have two Coast Guard stations. I'm a volunteer chaplain. I wear a uniform. 
uh, when I'm around them and they take me out on the boats. I get to witness to them. Every year we, we have special things that we do for them. Because a lot of times your military is forgotten. Y'all got them right here. <laughs> but these fellas are little stations, maybe 14 to 20 people on their station. And the U.S. Coast Guard has given me authority and the rank of lieutenant. <laughs> so salute when you pass by. <laughs> it was funny. I, I was doing a funeral for a and that's not funny, but uh, a 49 year old Coast Guard lady who died and they asked me to do the memorial service. And I got to the gate where I go through to get in. I had a friend with me and I don't think you weren't with me on that one. But anyway, uh, Cliff Capers, who I was talking about earlier, who had the heart attack and that. No, we picked you up later. Yep. That's right, we picked him up later. He was on the side of the road. And <laughs> <laughs> so we picked him up. But anyway, I, I got to the gate and this young fellow just stood there. And I had to think for a minute. And, and Cliff said, I think he wants you to salute back. I salute him. He went back and <laughs> he wasn't good. He couldn't do it. Uh, but anyway, we went to Viola Battery. Y'all ever heard of Forrest Gump? <laughs> anyway, I, I'm not far from Viola Battery. That's fog. You can't see anything out of there. Yeah. Out of there. Now, it got dark later and it's just deep gray. And the fellas, I'm sitting in a seat behind uh, the control room where the helm is. And they're all looking at the instruments. I mean, they couldn't, you can't see anything. Fog's so thick, you could cut it. They said, chaps, are you okay? I said, I'm fine. I said, are y'all okay? They said, we can't see, but we got all these instruments and we have to, you know, we're checking our instruments and sounding with them to see. I said, oh, y'all are crazy. I said, when I was on a boat, I said, we had a cane pole. <laughs> and we'd take that cane pole to see what the <laughs> <laughs> And we got back to the station and it, I, you heard of Gilligan's Island? Three hour tour took five and a half hours. <laughs> we went to tour. We were inspecting shrimp boats in Viola Battery. And, uh, Forest boat, uh, Gump's boat passed. <laughs> it was okay. But that's a great ministry that we do when we have the time to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got a rush home uh, for Friday. We're going to leave Thursday morning, right? Yep. Okay. Yeah, he keeps the time on me. Uh, we're going to leave Thursday morning so I can get back in time to do a retirement. For one of the officers who's retiring, he asked for me to do his retirement. Now I don't get paid for it, but it's it's an open door right there. Amen. <clears throat> I mean, I'm glad they're short because they can use me. And let me tell you about the providence of God. Oh, I got chill. You ever get chills when you think about something? <laughs> Man, I just did. When they were vetting me. I mean, I think they know what I eat for breakfast. Mm -hmm. I mean, they went through everything. They checked to see if I had any record of any kind to be a child, especially. And the fella who I had to see several was then the chaplain from New Orleans, who is my a Navy chaplain over me. He's Navy, but he's Coast Guard because they shared him out. <laughs> And he came to see me in my office, and we sat down and talked. I said, I think I know you. He says, I, I think so. I said, yeah. We did a funeral together in 1992. Mm. You were at the PCA church in Grenada, and I was at Central Baptist in Grenada, where Bill Lee is now. I was at Central. He said, I don't, I don't know. I'll check my records. 
he called me back. He called me after we had met and he had vetted me. And he said, you know what? You're right. <laughs> it's in my records. We did what, what? Listen, figure that on your calculator. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. I mean, God's got it all planned out. Absolutely. I mean, it's just super good the way the Lord has blessed and worked. Um, I'm the old fella in the middle that you can't see very well, but I'm the old fella. Okay. That's at a change of command. Mm -hmm. And so they asked me to do the change of command for one of the Coast Guard cutters. Well, what do I get to do? Share the gospel. Mm -hmm. Share the gospel. Now they can send me TDY, but I can't, I, if I say, look, I can't go, they, they can't do a thing about it. Not one thing. Because I don't really have to go. <laughs> This is a Ukrainian, giving him a Ukrainian Bible. And he said to me, and you see, he, he, he's very solemn, and that's mm -hmm. the way they are anyway. Right. But he said, I have not seen my mother nor my wife in months, and I've got no word from them Only. in Ukraine. Yeah. And I said, I have this for you. Mm. And he said, Biblia. I said, yes. He says, this, if he took him, took it after the picture was taken and held it to his breast and says, this will comfort me. Mm. That's part of where your support goes. Mm. It's for things like that. And more than a thing now. See that little fellow? <laughs> Can you see? Look at that. Mm. <laughs> He's Dutch. Mm -hmm. Went on board the ship, and the usually I don't look for the captain. I, I'm looking for the seafarers, and the captain's a seafarer. But I'm not always looking for the captain. But they said, uh, "You want to see the captain?" I said, "Well, okay." So I went and talked with him a while, and and, and had a great conversation, gospel talk with him. And he said, you will eat at my table. You know what I did? I said, yes, sir. <laughs> Whatever you say, boss man, mm -hmm. amen. We got to share the gospel with him. I could just go on and on. It's, it's just a blessing to be able to do this. But I couldn't do it if I didn't have the support to do it. Yeah. And so y'all provide that, and I've got some Bibles. Well, wait a minute. I brought a few things, and I've shown y'all things before, but I get all excited about it. Still am excited. Can't get over it. Uh, this is Burmese. Did I show y'all that before? Look at that writing. I'll just take it up, please. Okay, can you see how it is? Can you read it? <laughs> Look at this. Hmm? <laughs> huh. um. You ever seen anything like that? This is a real language. That's okay. <laughs> Look at that. Looks like worms crawling on the page. <laughs> This is Burmese. And this, I'll let Brother Larry look at it and tell us who did this translation right on the bottom of the page. Judson. <laughs> Add an arm, Judson. In the beginning, God. <laughs> <laughs> but this is Judson's translation. And that's the one they're still using. <laughs> Because it, how did he ever learn right. that? Oh, that hurt. <laughs> 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 oh, man. Uh, this is Vietnamese. We see a lot of Vietnamese around us because they were boat people. And uh, this is uh, the 
Hindi. Hmm. Hindi. And they'll take them and start reading. I, I don't want to hold y'all forever. I don't. That's your crazy man. I might have to show you some pictures. This is the insole. Wow. Okay? That's the insole. That's the insole. In the back of my van, I keep a lot of different materials because I don't know what I'm going to run into. And so I, I carry a lot of stuff. That's the insole. Okay? That's Turkey. That's Turkish. And I'm hoping I can. You know what? When you're old like me, you have a hard time with these newfangled things. Right. And I need to get back. Joe, get it back into my camera roll. I'll, you know, all the pictures. He'll do it. I was on board this turkey ship, all Turks. Got a picture of Ataturk, who is their hero. Ataturk. Okay, good. Went on board. You never know what you're going to run into, so you just go with a positive attitude. Right. So I went in. And they can't get off the ship. Customs and Border Protection is not going to let them off the ship. Right. Okay. So I go on board. And I, I I brought them a big bag of candy. Big bag of candy. And you say, candy? Is that mission work? Is that mission work? They they've been at sea. Mm -hmm. I mean, they can't go off the ship. They can't get anything. They thought that was, and here's what they said. Any pork in this? Oh. <laughs> Any pork? And they always ask me what I want to drink because they're, always, they're hospitable. And I said, Turkish tea, but with some cream. Okay. <laughs> so you see that little Demitas? <laughs> and they said, you're like the British. <laughs> you want that tea like that? But here, this is the amazing thing. Now these are Turks. Look what happened as soon as I give them the vials. Started reading. Started reading. Started reading. Started reading. They began to read. And I said two hours and they were reading and talking and then they were reading some more. Huh. It's an unusual situation. Well, I won't go any further. I mean. It's the kind of thing that just thrills your heart every Amen. time you go. They're out of their element. I'm in mine. Right. And the Lord has opened doors to get the Bibles we need. We shipped Bibles into Uganda just recently because there was a need there. Amen. Is that okay? Amen. Okay, you all need to vote on that. <laughs> <laughs> But that's what we did. Because people need the Word of God. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's how that works. Now we're going to be looking for a few minutes into the book of Matthew, chapter 13. Matthew, chapter 13. And we're going to deal with the parable of the net. The parable of the net. Would y'all be okay if I just stay sure. here? Yeah. Okay. I'd like to do that. <coughs> the parable of the net. So we're in Matthew chapter 13. And we're going to begin our reading at verse number 47. Now what did I do with my glasses? I threw them down here. Yeah. I'm going to have to get me one of those chains <laughs> so I don't lose them. Uh, I want to be sure I keep it, uh, be able to keep them. All right, Matthew chapter 13, verse number 47. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net. Now, I've got a net in the van and I meant to bring it in. I didn't bring it in. <coughs> it's my net, but I didn't bring it in. Uh, but you know what a net is. The kingdom of heaven is likened to a net that was cast into the sea and gathered of what kind? Every kind. Every kind. Every kind. 
every kind. Which, when it was full, they drew to shore and sat down and gathered the good into vessels. We're going to look at a few different things about this particular parable. First of all, the fishnet. The fishnet represents the churches of our Lord Jesus Christ preaching the gospel then and now. Right. That's the net. We cast the net and we are in the net. Okay? The church is the Lord Jesus preaching the gospel. The fishermen in this parable were the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. They knew all about fishing, didn't they? Mm -hmm. And so the fishermen here are the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. The fishermen today are the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That's us. That's us. And then the fish, and we'll see this as we look at this. These are those who are caught in the net. Mm -hmm. The net. And then there's a separation of the fish. And there will be a separation. Mm -hmm. No need in getting any, any deeper into that. But let's look at the net for just a moment. A moment. Examining the net. The net represents the true churches of the Lord Jesus Christ. Everything's got a name church on it, it's not a church. You're right. But these are the true churches of the Lord Jesus Christ who are preaching the gospel. Mm -hmm. The gospel of the death, burial, and resurrection. Preaching the truth of the word of God. And my net that's out in the van is not invisible. Right. It's a visible net. Now, it's made up of several different, I mean, you know what a net looks like and how that it's put together. I've got a cousin who, she makes nets. That's what she does. She makes nets and so on. Lydia was a, you know, she dealt in purple. Right, yeah. <laughs> and uh, Lisa, she makes shrimp troughs. Mm -hmm. she's, a, she's the best on the coast. She's good. So a net is not just one big sheet of cloth. It's sewn together. Mm -hmm. So the net represents the true churches of the Lord Jesus Christ who are preaching the gospel. Mm -hmm. It's tangible. You can, if I brought my net in, you can touch it. Mm -hmm. You can handle it. You can, can be with it. You can see it. You can feel it. Oh. The churches of the Lord Jesus Christ are local and visible bodies. Mm -hmm. They're local, visible bodies that make up. Uh, each church has a part in this net. Amen. In this net. And each net has a purpose. What's the purpose of a net? To catch fish. Right. Now we would shrimp, but we always caught fish in the shrimp net. All right. And shrimp, good. The net has a purpose. And the Greek word for net is a, it's a game. And we get our English word same hmm. from the word net. So a same is a net where you have a large net and you draw it around mm -hmm. fish. Mm -hmm. So here's this net and it's being used <coughs> to catch fish. It's being used to catch the fish in this parable. Now, this net has leads, our, our net had leads that held it to the bottom, but it also had a tickler chain. Now that's an odd thing that n most people don't know about, but for shrimp, shrimp stay in their bottom feeders. Mm -hmm. And 
In front of the lead that holds the net down, there's a tickler chain that the shrimp hit it. And you look it up on, you know, you've got a phone now with all that junk on it. <laughs> and you can look it up. But a tick, tickle chain, the shrimp hit it, and they go, ah, and they jump up and get in the net. <laughs> it's a tickle chain. So there's this net that's made up of the churches. Uh, this net does not represent a, 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 a cane pole or a rod and reel or anything like that, but it's a, it has great capacity. Mm -hmm. Great capacity of bringing people in. Mm -hmm. This church has great capacity. You say, well, wait a minute, we're here in Dover, Tennessee. No, you support missionaries all over the place. <clears throat> so that makes this part of the net with great capacity. Mm -hmm. Reaching out, reaching out, reaching out. J.R. Graves said this. Now, never heard of J.R. Graves, have you? Never. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. J.R. Graves, great man, Margaret. He said this, the kingdom of Christ is a definite organization set up for a definite purpose and constituted of definite material is true churches. Amen. Amen. What a blessing. We get to be part of that net. Mm -hmm. That net. Who are the fishermen? Well, Matthew uh, 13, 47 says this. The net was cast into the sea. It's done by the fishermen. Mm -hmm. uh, we would bring our net up. We would, first of all, put it in for the first drag, we would call it. And then we'd take and have a winch where we would pull the bag up the bag catches all the stuff and you have it tied and it, you bring it up and then you untie it and all, everything just <sighs> sharks and hammerhead sharks and regular sharks and stingrays mm. and uh, cowfish and all kinds of stuff and shrimp but you got to go through all that. And we'll get into that in just a second. We won't stay too long on it. But anyway, it has a definite material. And that's the churches of the Lord Jesus. The fishermen, they're the ones who cast the net. You're casting the net mm -hmm. here in Dover and around the world because you support missions. You're casting the net. There's no, something unusual about this particular group of fishermen. They're fishermen, but they were once fish. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. One Wednesday night, East Tower Baptist Church, this pastor wouldn't leave me alone. You know? I'll have to watch the clock. I'm not doing no, no. <laughs> anyway, this, my, uh, this preacher would come to the store where I work, uh, a &P, which is Atlantic and Pacific Tea Company, old a &P stores. I don't know if you had any of them yeah. up here or not. A&P, they're out of business now. But I worked for a and They were cleaning stores. Mm -hmm. They, man, every Monday night we had to clean the floor. Just take the wax up and then put down new wax and wait for it to dry and buff it and all of that. I worked for A&P and this Baptist preacher would come in there and he said, hey, what are you saying? I said, I go to Mormon church. <laughs> he said, you no more saved than my bird dog. <laughs> And he did that all the time. And he said, I want you to come to church on Sunday. I said, no way, buddy. In a way, I'm going to a Baptist church. <laughs> he said, well, come on Wednesday night. I said, well, I have to talk to Vito Canizero, my manager, and see if Mr. Vito will let me on. I talked to Vito. He said, yeah, we can work out because you can be off Wednesday night. So I started going, and I sat. Oh, maybe five rows back. I think there's a song around there. But anyway, <laughs> um, in the first few weeks, I mean, I was there because I said I was going to be there. And I heard the gospel with a physical ear. Mm -hmm. Now, I was a fish, but I, I wasn't in the net yet. Right. And one Wednesday night, the physical ear became a spiritual ear. Amen. And bang, I believed. I didn't have to pray a prayer. Right. I didn't have to do any kind of mumbo jumbo. 
Uh, As a matter of fact, I was saved that night and didn't say anything about it for a couple of weeks. I was just right. um, trying to digest it. But everything changed. Amen. Now, I was a fish, and now I'm a fisherman. But at once, one time I was just a fish. But now I'm a fisherman. Mm-hmm. You, you, does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah. Now I'm a fisherman. Now I'm a, a fisherman. Matthew 4, uh, 4 19 says this I want you to note it and I want you to see it. And he said to them, Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. There you go. So you're fishing for men. And so these men in the parable, and don't get upset when I say they were soul winners. The Bible says, He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seeds, shall, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing. And the Bible also tells us, the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. He that winneth souls good. is wise. So we are in the business of casting the net. Amen? You go. In the business of bringing in the hog, the fish, and everything with it. Everything comes in there. And those that are faithful at this stay with it are going to shine. My grandma used to say, boy, you're just putting on a shine. You ever heard that? That's old country saying. And part of my family were shrimpers and oystermen and all that. The other side were truck farmers. So I got it all. Man, I had good seafood and also had good vegetables. But we're going to shine. Mm-hmm. He that one of souls is wise. And those that lead many, that lead many to righteousness, the Bible says, are going to shine. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. You say, how does that fit in with the doctrines of grace? It fits beautifully. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm released from pressure. That's good. Yeah, because before I came to the doctors of grace, now I was saved, but I didn't come to the doctors of grace right away. Right. So I thought, man, I'm a dud. I'm not getting anybody saved. Well, I can't get anybody saved anyway. Right. That's the Lord's work. And I'm a happier person now. There you go. I'm happy. Now, I'm not going to get lazy. Now, don't get lazy. That's it. Amen. Resting on your laurels. And if anybody knows what the laurels is, you can tell me later. <laughs> but anyway, the net, the net is cast into the sea. What is the sea? It's the mass of humanity. We need to cast the net out, yes, to Arthur, who's from Orkney. Yep. That's it. Amen. Yep. Let's cast the net out to it. Let's cast the net out to my good friend Ian from England. We're casting the net. That's what we do. Casting the net. The field is the world. The seed are the children of the kingdom. But the tares are the children of the wicked one. There are people out there that are tares, but there's some true people out there. There are those that the Lord has that we are encouraged to go after. You know what? We're not primitive, are we? That's it. We're not primitive Baptists. Mm-hmm. We're missionary. We are. You say, well, sovereign grace of missionary. Yeah. Yep. That's what we are. We get the gospel out. We're to spread the net all over the world. Mm-hmm. Listen to this. Acts 1 8. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and unto the uttermost. Amen. How can you and I do that? Through missions. Right. Amen. That's how we do it. That's how we do it. We spread the net that way. Uh, Mark 16, 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He's 
separates the fish. Mm -hmm. You preach the gospel there you go. to every creature. Luke 5, 4 says this, now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep, Jesus is speaking, and let down your nets for a drought. That word drought means a haul. I mean, you're going to catch. Sometimes we come in and they meet us at the dock at the factory and they say, you catch anything? We got a haul. Right. Man, we've got a haul. We got a, we got a drop. We got it. We got it. But what happened here? Let down your nets. But Simon, oh Peter, he was always doubting. Mm -hmm. And Simon answering said unto them, unto him, Master, we have toiled all night and have taken nothing. You ever feel that way? Yep. <laughs> you toiled all night. I mean, you've been you've been at this here in Dover for a while. Mm -hmm. Toiled all night, taking nothing. But then it says, "Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net." Amen. <laughs> and He's given us that word. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That's what we're to do. How do we do it? Through home, mm -hmm. mission work, starting churches. Aaron does need a church. I know that it's been tried several yes. times, tried over and over. And uh, I preached a revival in Aaron many years ago at a, a small Southern Baptist church. I don't know that I've ever been colder in my life. Right. I mean it. Oh, yeah. And, and uh, cold in more ways than one. Uh, they put me in a back room with no heat, <laughs> and it was colder than it was last night. <laughs> I, had, I slept with my clothes on and every blanket and anything I could find. And got up in the morning, put my clothes on under. Have any of y'all ever done that? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I got dressed under the covers. I mean, I was frozen. <laughs> But there's a need for spreading the net, getting the gospel out, going to all the world. Uh, the fish, the Bible says in Matthew 13, 47, the last part says, they gathered of every kind. What does that mean? Well, you get all those different kinds that I was talking about. I mean, you got, and you get some junk fish. Oh, yeah. Cigar fish. My papa said that for everything on the land, there's something like it in the sea. We would catch a cowfish. Hmm. And it looked just like a cow. I mean, didn't have legs and udders and all that. But the part, the face of the thing looked like a cow. Mm. Look it up sometime. People say, I don't believe it. Look it up. You can look it up now. All right. You know, <laughs> you can find all that. But it's there. So you're going to catch all kinds going to get in. And, you know, sometimes people come into the church, but they're not saved. They're baptized even. You baptize them on a profession of faith. But they're not saved. Mm -hmm. But I, I want to say that there are all kinds of people. There are Japanese fish, there are Korean fish, there are Burmese fish, all these different fish. And how are we going to catch them? You go to Japan? I've been there three times. I never got out of the airport. Mm. <laughs> I flew to. Uh, Yakota from Korea headed to Vietnam. And then I was fly, I flew into Tachikawa, heading somewhere else. And I don't remember the other flight. But anyway, I've been to Japan. That's all I can say. <laughs> I've been there and went outside a minute and put my foot on the ground and said, I've been to Japan. <laughs> but that's about it. But they're Japanese fish. They're Japanese fish. As I said, Korean fish. All kinds of fish. Some are trophy fish. Nope. Some not so trophy. But they're trophies of grace to the Lord. Now listen to this, and I, I'm, I'm winding her down. Ephesians 2 7, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his <laughs> kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. 
Amen. Those are caught in the net. Those that are talking about here. Uh, Ephesians 2, 8, 9, 8, 9. For by grace are you saved through faith, and not, not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Mm -hmm. It's all of grace that we're in the net. Benjamin Keach said this. And I love reading Keach and Gill. And a lot of people, good preachers, went out through that particular church. Had different names at times. Right. The Metropolitan, Ta Metropolitan Tabernacle in London was once, once named the Horse Lay Down <laughs> Church. <coughs> Horse Lay Down. They changed it. I'm glad they did. Right. That's, that's better. But... Uh, Yes, the, the fish are separated. We are, if you're saved, you've been separated from others. Mm -hmm. Amen? And that's why we believe in what? Separation, because we've been separated. Now, mm -hmm. Benjamin Keith says, a net, and I'm quoting, a net takes fish out of their element. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen? It's a, a net takes fish out of their element, so... Those sinners who are spiritually, savingly wrought upon by the preaching of the word are taken out of that element where they lived and loved to live before. That's it. Out of a course of sin and wickedness and such die presently to sin. Those who come to see the Lord, they <coughs> presently die to sin and to all the vanities of the sea of this world. Mm. Amen. Why? Because we've been caught by the net. We've been brought in. That's it. Amen? Amen. What a blessing. Are you in? Have you trusted the Lord Jesus Christ? It's not in a prayer. It's not in a plan. It's in the man. Amen. Christ Jesus. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That's it. Amen. 